Welcome to Vata Wooden Biofuel Private Limited. I am Harikishan Shrestha and I am production manager of this company of new product. It's a briquette. Please tell us about why you choose to start a company in Nepal. Well, I came here to Nepal 10 years ago and I found here a beautiful country and a great people. But also a lot of problems. There is garbage everywhere in the street. Most of the forests have been cut down and most of my friends didn't have any jobs. So I started a company called Watabaran. Watabaran is dedicated to cleaning Nepal's environment and to create a job for people who don't have any job and be a fair trade company. This is Watabaran Biofuel. Our aim is to make sure that people no longer have to cut the trees and we believe that the only way to make people stop cutting down the trees and burning them is to provide them with a fuel that is cheaper and more efficient than firewood and that's what we do. We produce fuel briquettes. We take sawdust and farm waste and we press it together and make briquettes that we sell to the industry so they can burn briquettes instead of burning firewood. So with the mission of saving Nepal's forest, the company will now produce an alternative fuel. But how severe is this problem with landslides and deforestation? Because one of the most beautiful and astonishing remarks of this country is its landscape. And stepping into the countryside, you can see how beautiful and pure the nature is. Every year, landslides are caused by deforestation and the monsoon, which leads to the people are dying as the villages are being destroyed. And according to the Ministry of Forest and Soil Conservation here in Nepal, about 78% of the country's entire energy system is based on wooden fuel. So if creating an alternative fuel, how is this being done? Uh, this is our briquette and our raw material is farm waste and sawdust. Uh, this is saving machine. This machine separates our raw material uh, into big pieces and small pieces. This is the furnace, part of the dryer. Furnace generates the heat for the dry the raw material. And the generated heat from the furnace uh, goes to the pipe through the through this pipe with the raw material. And dry raw material comes from the big pipe. And this uh, raw material goes to the our briquetting machine. This screw takes the raw material from the dryer into the briquetting machine and inside the briquetting machine the, uh, the raw material pressed by the ramp. And briquette comes out and through the cooling track it uh, comes out to the, our baggage with the cool briquette. Bina, you are the CEO of Vatabaram Biofuel. Um, what made you decide to change from a paper company to a biofuel briquette company? Uh, the mo most important reason of uh, changing our whole production line from paper to biofuel is because uh, over the period of years we figured out that the market for handicrafts and uh, handmade paper was shrinking in the uh, 
international uh, level and we are we were exporting 100% to Sweden and uh, USA or people wanted uh, to be more environment friendly and started sending out e-cards instead of christmas cards and we we were we are a company that wants to grow and make a difference in the society and that was not happening so with the briquet company we have all we have uh, met all these goals for example we can recycle more than 50 times uh, of agricultural and industrial waste than with the paper company we can sell it to the local market 100% that means all the uh, money is uh, going into the society and we are not exporting the money out of the country and uh, we are also helping the environment to save trees and use uh, the agriculture and industries with so this was a perfect uh, kind of business that we wanted to begin with and who will be your primary customers uh, we are targeting the small and medium sized industries in nepal those are using firewood rice husk or loose sawdust at present using loose, loose sawdust is extremely inefficient and firewood is becoming scarce year after year so we want to target these kind of industries who are using uh, these uh, fuel to in their production line for example uh, carpet industries pashmina industries they use uh, firewood to dye their products and we can use it in bakeries who are using ovens to make make their products at, at present and we want to replace it with our biofuel. So you say that your company is based on the fair trade values, but most people associate fair trade with uh, chocolate, tea and coffee products. But w how do you associate fair trade with biofuel? I think the most important thing while working with fair trade is to work according to the fair trade principles. And actually, I think that every company should be working with fair trade. Uh, and what it means practically is that we uh, strive to build up a working environment where everyone can feel safe, where they know that they have a job security for a long time, where they have a good salary, good working conditions, they can join a trade union if they want, they have uh, accidental insurance, they have medical insurance, uh, we have paid maternity leave and a lot of good facilities. It's also about thinking about safety because in the developing countries people often forget the simple safety measures such as having a fire extinguisher in the factory making sure that people wear masks to make the work safe very very simple thing but actually I got uh, a new perspective on fair trade in the very beginning when I started the company I was making employment contracts with my employees and I realized they came to sign the contract they looked at the contract and they wanted to put their thumb on it because they didn't know how to read and write so they were about to put a thumbprint on a contract that they couldn't read and I felt like, oh my god, this is wrong. I mean, we have to, they need, they need to learn this. So I organized a literacy class. We found a teacher living nearby, and he came every morning for one hour and taught everyone to read and write. And that cost us 15 euros per month. And the amazing thing was, I thought I was just doing something good, but this turned out to be the single most profitable investment that I've ever done. Because when they learned how to read and write, the efficiency increased. Our conflicts disappeared because they can read the employment contract. And I think the important thing here to remember is that investing in the employees and in, in uh, their working conditions, it's not just something that's good for the employees, it's also good for the company. It builds stability. So what I learned was that working with fair trade and the fair trade values and actually investing in the, uh, the employees in the company is actually profitable. It's not just something you do because it's a good thing to do, it's something you do because it makes the company better.